Greetings Redlings and welcome to Red Risks. In this video I'm going to talk to you about preliminary hazard analysis, pre-HARS, and I've structured the content as follows. I'm going to clear up some confusion, dive into some clarity, talk to you about our focus, and then I'm going to talk to you about the origins, some similarities, a helicopter view, deeper dive, applicability, and then I'm going to talk to you about methodologies at BP and a methodology at Shell, talk about record keeping, how you capture those results, and more importantly also, how to use those results. But I also want to talk to you about limitations. What are the limitations of a pre ha But before we dive in, I just want to say that we do have possibly a quiz and also a checklist. We do have an app, as you know, the Safer Working app, where we share this information through that app. And if all else fails, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I can keep you notified of content as it's delivered. Now there's a lot of confusion about preliminary hazard analysis, uh, pre hars and I've actually dived into quite a lot of research in preparing this sort of short video and specifically I referred to the uh, CCPS which is the Chemical Center for Process Safety's guidelines for hazard evaluation process and in fact in the future I'm going to do another video all about the different tools and techniques and risk assessments because I think it's definitely worthwhile doing this definitely a lot of confusion out there and people using acronyms in not the right way. So when you look at this um, uh, CCPS guideline, they actually have a section where in there talk about PHAs and pre hars PHAs is the process hazard analysis. Most of you are very familiar with that, I suspect. The pre har is the preliminary hazard analysis. There is a link to this document and I will Put it, it's on the slide, but I'll also put it in the descriptions of the video uh, on the YouTube channel and also on our website as well. So let's talk about pre hars Now, in the CCPS guidelines, they actually do talk about it in this context. Process has analysis is directed towards analyzing potential causes, consequences of fires, explosions, etc., etc. It's very process driven, very methodical, very structured. The pre har preliminary hazard analysis is a high level view and it's really at the early stages of the system design. It focuses on identifying the weaknesses early in the life of a system, hence it saves you the time and also the effort so you don't have the problems later on down the road in terms of trying to fix them. But where, where did it all start from? Well, the preliminary hazard analysis is a technique that came originally from the US military standard uh, safety program requirements, the MIL STD882. I've managed to get a copy of that document and in there, if you look at the section 52.2, it actually gives you a definition which is no different than, let's say it's very similar to the CCPS guidelines. But I hear you ask, well Sonny, look, all these definitions, is this not the same as a hazard? Yes, it is. And in effect, a preliminary hazard analysis pre har is essentially a hazard identification process, a hazard. What gives me the right to say that? Well, I really looked at a lot of people and what they're doing. And as you know, my background is BP. And in BP, we have a procedure or a general uh, procedure, GP48-05, on hazard identification. There is a descriptor in there of a hazard identification. I don't want to go into the big description, but it says the hazard is sometimes called a preliminary hazard analysis. And if you look at the shell depths, it also says the same thing and also mobile exon because a hazard in, this, in, in effect is a high level view. In the CCPS guidelines for hazard evaluation processes, they talk about non-scenario based hazard evaluation procedures. Not going into too much detail in here, but you can see the talk at the top end as to what they contain. Some some different techniques, and of course one of those is the pre har the safety reviews, relative ranking, and also checklist analysis. But that's not all. They also have a thing called scenario-based hazard evaluation procedures, and this is this this has a lot of acronyms. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, and it goes into all sorts of things about what if analysis, what if checklists, hazard operability studies, which we've covered before in other videos. And I'm probably going to cover it again because I think it's a very important topic. But if you want to find some acronyms and you enjoy acronyms, then uh, you can certainly find quite a few here. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about pre har because that's that's what we want to do, and that's our deeper dive. You know. Um, in terms of the pre har the pre har is a technique. It's broad, it's an initial study using the early stages of a system design, which I mentioned 
right at the beginning. And it focuses on identifying apparent hazards, assessing the severity of potential accidents that occur involving the hazards, and identifying safeguards for reducing the risks associated with the hazards. The pre-hub focuses on identifying weaknesses early in the life of the system. What you don't want to do is miss those and then later on you have to pick them up, which of course is an incredible waste of resources, time, effort, money, you name it. And with the resource bubble getting tighter every day and, and smaller every day, what you don't want to do is go back and revisit those mistakes. But let's do a little bit more of an applicability side of things that is generally applicable for most type of risk assessment applications, but focuses predominantly on identifying and classifying hazards rather than evaluating them in detail, which is where the process hazard analysis comes in. And is most often conducted early in the development, which I keep saying over and over again, it's very important to emphasize that, of an activity or a system when there is little detailed information or there are few operating procedures. And it's often a precursor to further risk assessment. Think of it like this, it's probably a step one, a good sort of helicopter view in terms of finding out what the hazards are. And then that might actually pave the way in terms of saying, well, we need to do a deeper dive here because there are some significant concerns that we have in this particular process or operation. Let's now talk about some typical uses. Now it's generally applicable for almost any type of risk assessment application, but focuses predominantly on identifying and classifying hazards rather than evaluating them in detail. And I must keep emphasizing that you're not going to go into the minutiae of detail of trying to analyze these. And is most often conducted early in the development. Again, I keep emphasizing that because I do want to clarify the differences here. And when there is de not enough detail, you know, there's little detailed information or there are a few operating procedures. Methodologies. I want to share with you some methodologies from my experience and, and certainly from BP, which is a company that I've had a long association with and of course some other, other oil and gas companies. Um, the steps are very straightforward. First, organize a study into systems, activities or review areas to ensure inclusion of the full study scope. For each system, potential hazards and their causes should be identified and potential causes resulting from these hazards should then be considered. Hazards and consequences may be ranked for risk to facilitate you know, further reviews, assessments, etc., and also to help with decision making. I'm saying help, support decision making. It shouldn't be the absolute norm for making the decision. And also it looks at, methodology looks at any existing safeguards that should be documented into the actual sequence of steps. And then recommendations to eliminate, prevent, control, mitigate hazards should then be generated. Here you'd basically follow the hierarchy of controls or, and then try and sort of go uh, towards elimination if you can. And of course the least favorable option being PPEs. I've done lots of videos on hierarchy of controls. Flick through the YouTube channel and you should find one that probably is quite uh, interesting to watch in terms of the worked example as well. Let's dive into a methodology from Shell now. And here I'm not going to sort of drown you with words. And literally there is a sort of, this is Shell Depths EP950312 and it's from the HSE manual. Essentially it's the same. And it's all about brainstorming, getting together, look what the potential hazards are, and then look at controls that are in place. Is it applicable? Then repeat it and go forward. So it's a, it's a looped type approach. Stop the video whenever you want so you can uh, have a look at this uh, diagram in more detail. Unfortunately, I can't share the diagram details as a, as a document or anything, but you'll find them all over the internet. Let's just say do, do a browser search and you should find something very similar. This is an example of a record keeping process in BP. As you can see, I've sort of gone towards calling it, let's go back, I've gone towards calling it hazard um, because for me, in the in the areas that I'm involved, we, we sort of focus on hazards. I mean, you can call them pre hazards or whatever but hazard well, not only does it sound e nice it's easy to say as well so fundamentally we look at systems we look at you know potential causes so you're going through that looped process in terms of what you're trying to find looking at mitigation causes and also any existing safeguards and so on the system or a node is an important definition It's really uh, used a lot in hazops and risk assessments and it's a discrete area or portion of an activity plant or a system that permits a stepwise approach towards progressing through the hazard or pre-hazard. 
Um, you you hear people say nodes. You'll hear some people say systems. There are probably other things that they'd say, but fundamentally think of it as packets that they're looking into open the box and try and explore a little bit more detail. In terms of results, the results are fairly straightforward you know, in keeping. You, you, uh, when you set out on these sort of risk assessments, uh, the pre hars you usually have a scribe. Well, you do have a scribe. You have a lead person. You have a group of people involved with key uh, sort of skills and also involved from disciplines and different areas, electricians, electrical engineering, civil engineering, etc. They come together and they document this in, in this format that you can see here. Uh, I'm not going to dive into the details here about what this particular example is from BP because I want to do other videos where we actually apply the hazard or the pre har into a particular uh, process and see what actually happens. What are the things that we can get from there? Using the results, well, I mean, we all know how we use results from risk assessment. We we can use it to help us in terms of judging acceptability. We can look at it in terms of improvement opportunities, recommendations for improvements, equipment modifications, procedural changes, administrative policy. The list is endless, you know, but we all know why we do risk assessments. We know that it helps in terms of, well, uh, preventing loss of life, loss of primary containment, and all of those things that keep people awake at night. So let's talk about limitations. And because it is conducted very early in, in the design stages, there are two real primary limitations. One is it requires additional follow-up analysis, especially if information is not available at that stage. So it's important to make sure that you have all the information readily available. And the quality of the results is highly dependent on the knowledge of the team. And we talked about learned experiences. Now, at the time of a pre har apologies for the uh, acronym mistake there, it should be pre har just as P-R-H-A, there are few or no fully developed system specifications, little or no designed information. Therefore, the risk assessment is literally that sort of an approach, but it's better than nothing, you know, and I think it's important to accept that, that you may have to come back and review it. But the other good thing about it is you don't spend massive amounts of time like you do in HAZOPS, you know, days and weeks going through uh, uh, piping instrumentation diagrams, cause and effect diagrams, etc. You you spend a little bit of time up front so you can get better rewards later on in terms of the detailed assessment. So that's it in a nutshell. Rapidly went through that PowerPoint presentation. I apologies for the ton of words on there, but I'm sure you can just pause it, stop it, check it out. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if I haven't read any of the details. I think mostly I just sort of uh, come out with this as well at the same time. I just want to say thank you very much for listening to me on this video. And also, again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we are very keen to spread the message in terms of connect, share and learn. And also appreciate any of your feedback as well. And once again, there might be a quiz, there might be a checklist and there might be tools associated with it, which we'll point out into the descriptions on the YouTube channel. And of course, you know, you are more than welcome to subscribe to our CommuniSafe newsletter on LinkedIn. OK, so that's it on this video. And thank you for sh well, sharing your time with me and listening patiently to me as I've gone through the preliminary hazard analysis process. If you have any questions, let me know. Till next time. Ciao.